Look, if I was to tell you that this glass of pure mineral water contained asbestos, do you really think I would be drinking it? Of course not. And yet the Cancer Council of Australia has released a position statement exploring how one of the most popular beverages contributes to Sue Rad. Thank you so much for coming today. <laughs> Every Pleasure. time I learn something from you. The position statement re uh, revealed what? Well, a position statement was on mm. alcohol and cancer. Alcohol. Um, and we now know that alcohol is a proven cause mm. of cancer. Any amount of alcohol will mm. increase your risk of cancer. This most but popular the more you of drink, Aussie beverages. The worse yeah. it is. Yeah. Ah. So there is no doubt. In fact, we've known for 20 years mm. that alcoholic beverages cause mm. cancer. They are graded mm. as uh, grade one mm. carcinogen, meaning proven in humans, no doubt there. But you hardly but ever very, read about this in the newspaper. Yeah, very few people know. Yeah. And for example, uh, the evidence is convincing mm. for cancers such as breast cancer. Okay. Few women know that. Mm -hmm. um, for cancers okay such for as... So <laughs> Throat, throat. Uh, you know, oh, sort of the neck okay. area, pharynx, larynx, the, the esophagus, that's the food mm. pipe. Um, it's proven in men for colon cancer. Is It's uh, also probable in yeah. women for colon cancer mm. and probable in terms of liver cancers. So lots of cancers are linked with alcohol use. Mm. And so this position statement is really has mm. really scoured the evidence to make some clear recommendations. Maybe we don't hear about discuss. it often because it's not really a party conversation topic, no. is it? No, yeah. and if you look at people who both yeah. smoke and who drink, mm -hmm. it's even worse. The situation oh, gets worse. Well, for example, yeah. if you're just a drinker and you drink regularly, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you have an increased risk of the sort of the mouth and throat cancers by about six or seven times. If you're a smoker, the same sort of thing applies. But if you both drink and, and smoke, smoke heavily, yeah. you have a 35 times increased risk of cancer. So this oh, is some so sort of synergy. Yeah, yeah, they okay. work together. Two baddies working together. And this yeah. same principle applies to the other risk factors of cancer, I guess, does it? So well, it, it can if drive... If you're susceptible to colon yeah. cancer, alcohol will yeah, multiply so for example, even more. Alcohol helps you gain weight very rapidly. Okay. Gaining weight rapidly in obesity is strongly linked to cancer. That's one of the mechanisms through, okay. through which it works. And there are several others yeah. for which we know. Mm. What is reported in the paper, and you do see this often, you've probably heard about it yourself, and that is, isn't it true that red wine is good for your heart? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the Cancer Council Australia says yeah. that the existing evidence yeah. um, does not justify promoting mm. any alcoholic beverages to reduce the risk of heart disease, even in small amounts. Um, mm. And yeah, and it basically says that um, the evidence is very weak, okay. and that in the past, a lot of the studies um, have mis classified former drinkers into okay. teetotal groups. Um, and you know, when you're a former drinker, yeah. if you've already got some ill effects yeah. of alcohol, you bring them along with you. And there's also what they call confounding, some residual confounding, meaning mm. that you might have just mm. had a healthy lifestyle mm. um, and that's helped to keep you alive and, yeah. and healthier, but you might have been drinking alcohol and that they're, might they're, still they're, be causing an effect. These scientific bodies are not religious wowser groups, are they? No, they're not. So yeah. even the National Heart Foundation, or okay. the Heart Foundation as they're called mm. these days, does not recommend taking up drinking to reduce your risk of heart disease. Neither so the does the World Health Organization. Well, they've got vested interests. Many okay. people, um, even some in the medical profession, dare I say, you know, mm. own vineyards. So they okay. need to sell wine. Okay. <laughs> but the evidence does not justify, as the Cancer yeah. Council Australia says, any need to promote alcohol yeah. to reduce your risk of heart disease. Okay. There's lots of other ways to reduce your risk, such as a good diet, exercising, okay. stress control, you know, drinking water. Yeah. All of these other ways can lower your risk okay. without raising but your there's, risk. But there's, there's still one burning, burning question. Everybody mm. wants to know uh, how much. What are the guidelines well, for alcohol? For cancer prevention, yeah. none. They're basically oh. saying to avoid it, okay. um, preferably to avoid it. Mm. Um, and if you need to drink, uh, the National Health and yeah. Medical Research Council of Australia says yeah. no more than two standard drinks on any given day. Mm -hmm. And two standard drinks is not very much. Yeah, okay. It's extremely small. But if you really want to be healthy, yeah. um, as I mentioned, there's lots yeah. of other ways to be healthy without having to take something that may risk raise your risk of cancer. Pure, so. clean, asbestos-free <laughs> <laughs> and alcohol-free water. It's uh, still good for you. And it, good Sue? for the heart. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy it now. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs>